Now, when I was first coming up shooting music videos, I didn't have established directors that I could look to, whether it be on YouTube or other social media platforms that were sharing any kind of information or experience that they had learned through the years of shooting music videos. Now, it was actually quite the opposite. Most directors or any other type of job in that department of music videos, people were choosing to hoard that information and to not share with up and coming directors or whatever job within the music video world. They just were choosing to hoard that information in fear of possibly losing out on jobs if they chose to share that information with other up and coming directors or even directors that were on the same level as them. YouTube, what is going on guys? It is Joe Moore and I'm back here with another video. As you can tell in this video, we're gonna be discussing music videos, but specifically what we're gonna be talking about is five helpful tips that's going to help increase the quality of your music videos as well as throw in a couple bonuses at the end, in addition to the five main helpful tips to increase the quality of your music videos. So without wasting any time, guys, let's go ahead and hop right into the video. Now guys, tip number one is going to be learning the camera basics. And what I mean specifically by camera basics is learning your exposure triangle. Now the exposure triangle is made up of three things, which is your aperture, your shutter speed, and your ISO. Now with the shutter speed, the higher up you go on your shutter speed, the less light that's allowed into the light of the sensor, the slower your shutter speed, the more light that's allowed into the sensor, and the more you're creating motion blur. Now when it comes to the shutter speed in music videos, you'll usually want this to be double the amount of the frame rate that you're shooting in. So if you're shooting in 24 frames per second on a DSLR, you'll usually wanna shoot in 50 above. If you're shooting in 60 frames per second for slow motion and B-roll, you're gonna to wanna to shoot in 120 and above, and then so on and so forth, depending on the frame rate you're shooting in. So an easy way to think about it is, with shutter speed is, whatever frame rate you're shooting in, try to have that be double the shutter speed that you're shooting in. 24 frames per second, 50 and above, 60 frames per second, 120 and above, so on and so forth. Also guys, another way to think about it is depending on the type of genre or artist that you're shooting or how the song is going, will depend on the kind of shutter speed that you're gonna have your camera in. So usually for uh, hip hop or rap songs, what I usually do is, is I'll keep my shutter speed between 80 to 120 because usually the hip hop or rap songs have a higher BPM and it's a faster paced song and tempo. So you wanna have a more jagged, edgy kind of look to your video. You wanna be able to have less motion blur in your video. It's a fast paced visual, which is usually gonna have a lot of effects or fast chops to create the scene for your music video. Now, when it comes to the opposite side of that, if I'm shooting, say, an R&B singer or even a slower paced tempo song, what I'll usually do is try to keep the uh, shutter speed between 50 to 60. And that's basically because it's a slower based tempo song and I'm not gonna be doing as fast paced movements as I would with, say, a rap song when I have the shutter speed uh, between 80 to 120 of a second. So guys, the next thing on the exposure triangle is going to be your aperture, and that's gonna determine how open or closed your lens stays. Now, a wider aperture, or to keep it simple, a smaller f-stop number is going to allow more light into the lens, and what that's going to do is create a shallower depth of field or create the bokeh effect that a lot of people talk about. A narrow aperture or a higher number f-stop on your camera is going to allow less light into the camera lens. And what that's going to do is, is create everything in focus instead of creating a shallow depth of field. It's going to create an effect where it has everything in the shot in focus. So usually what happens is, is if you have a f-stop number between uh, 2.8 and below, even all the way down to 1.2, you're going to create a shallower depth of field and you're gonna have that bokeh effect and if you use a narrower aperture or a higher number f-stop, say between uh, 5.6 and above, what that's going to do is make everything in focus in the shot that you have. So when you're shooting music videos, when you do a close-up of an object or the artist for a performance scene or B-roll, you'll usually want a more shallow depth of field. So you'll want to have a lesser number f-stop for your aperture. And then if you're shooting the artist and trying to get the establishing shot, you'll want to use a wider angle lens and you'll want to have a narrower aperture or a higher number f-stop when it comes to shooting that establishing shot with that wide angle lens. Now, the last thing I did want to discuss on the exposure triangle is your ISO. And I did put that last because you should be dealing with your shutter speed and your aperture before you go try to crank up your ISO. Now, the reason why I said you should be touching your ISO last is because ISO is your sensitivity to light. The higher up you go on your ISO, the more you're allowing for artificial noise 
and lesser quality on the actual camera and the shot that you're doing. So ISO needs to be the last thing that you touch or try to crank up. You should be dealing with your shutter speed and your aperture first when it comes to music videos. Now moving on, tip number two is going to probably be the most important part of this whole five tip and bonus process, and that is going to be the pre-production of your music video. Now any established director will tell you that pre-production is going to be the most important and crucial aspect of shooting a music video, because if you set up and establish everything within pre-production, when you get on set to shoot your music video, everything will run much smoother and instead of shooting say unnecessary clips or not being properly prepared with the right kind of lighting or the right kind of equipment or even if you didn't create a treatment so now you're just running gunning the whole shoot and trying to just shoot a bunch of things and create an actual story in your head on the fly this will in turn create less stress and headache when you go to sit down in the post-production process when you go to edit and color your footage because you've already set up a treatment and a mini storyline in the pre-production process for shooting the music video on production to spend less time on in pre-production. Now guys, when it comes to pre-production, this is a whole entire process that I could actually spend a whole video on discussing, but luckily for you all, the homie YC Imaging actually has a whole course on Skillshare for free that you can go watch and view and he breaks down everything needed to be successful in the pre-production process. So I will leave a link down below where you can go view his course on pre-production and everything entailed in creating a successful pre-production process for your music videos. Making sure to spend the time and quality in the pre-production process of your music video will take you from the beginner to an intermediate and an advanced music video director. So the pre-production process is something that I highly recommend to any music video director. Put the time in and you'll see the quality come out. Now tip number three is going to be knowing and understanding your frame rates and when to use specific frame rates in the music video process. Now when it comes to the frame rates, usually what you'll wanna do for any cinematic feel or look or even just for your performance shots, you're gonna to wanna to shoot it in 24 frames per second or 23.976 depending on the DSLR you have or the camera that you have. And then if you want B-roll or slow motion shots, you're gonna to wanna to shoot in 60 frames and up. Uh, it goes from 60 frames, 72 frames, 96 frames, 120 frames, uh, just depends on the camera that you have, but anything from 60 and up is going to be more entailed for your B-roll or slow motion shots. 24 frames per second or 23.976 is going to be for your cinematic feel and for the performance style shots in your music videos. Now a beginner mistake that often a lot of music video directors do is, is they'll shoot their performance takes or their cinematic takes in 30 frames per second or higher, sometimes even 60 frames per second. And when you do that, what you're doing is, is you're taking away the cinematic look and you're creating a more real-time based video or music video. So when it comes to your performance takes or anything outside of slow motion B-roll, what I would tell you to do is to shoot in 24 frames per second or if you have a cinematic camera, some directors choose to shoot the performance takes in 48 frames per second, because what that's doing is, is it's still basically giving you that cinematic feel, but at certain parts of the performance take, you can slow it down a little bit, not as good as 60 frames per second or higher, but what it's doing is, is it's allowing you to play back and forth between having that cinematic look and being able to slow motion the shot as opposed to having 24 frames per second and then trying to slow down that footage where you're gonna get a whole bunch of choppy, jagged look. It's not gonna look right in slow motion. And that is also another mistake that some people do is, is they'll shoot in 24 frames per second and then try to slow that motion down like if they had a shot in 60 frames per second or higher. So just make sure not to make those mistakes when you're using frame rates. 24 frames per second is for the performance takes or for having that cinematic look. And then 60 frames per second and higher is going to be for your slow motion or capturing B-roll style shots. Now tip number four in this is going to be something that I've not seen a lot of people ever discuss and it's something that's very vital to your music video shoot and that's going to be your team or your crew. Now, similar to pre-production, the team and crew is something that I see a lot of up and coming and beginner directors not spend the time on. And it's something that's also just as vital as the pre-production process. You need to spend the time having and establishing a trustful and reliable team and crew for your music video shoots. Now, even when you're shooting music videos with little to no budget, I would still make sure to have at least one to two people on set whether they're interning or assisting you, even if you still have the one man band, the music video shoot where you're doing a majority, if not all of the jobs on the music video set that day, 
at least having an extra helping hand or helping hands will assist on the music video process and make it run much smoother and quicker than if you were just trying to do everything on your own and you had no help or assistance on the music video shoot. It's better to take away a little bit of the money out of your director's fee that you would walk away with from the music video project and put that towards helping out and having other people on set assisting you in the music video process. You need to look at the long term, not the short term when it comes to music videos. And at the end of the day, the final project is what truly matters. So if you're able to have one to two people on set helping and assisting you, if the budget isn't there to have a whole team or a whole crew, and that's going to help make the music video look better in the end, that's what's more important than pocketing some of that money that you would have instead of putting that towards the team and crew or the one to two people helping you on set with the music video. You need to think long term, not short term. And at the end of the day, when you have the final product that looks good, this will lead to more music video jobs and higher budgeted videos, which will in turn be able to have you be able to get a bigger and better crew. So guys, the fifth and final tip in creating better quality music videos is going to be your lighting. Now guys, obviously as you could tell, there's a huge difference between this kind of lighting setup for my YouTube videos, as opposed to trying to shoot a YouTube video or shoot a quality shot with this kind of lighting. So take that same aspect when it comes to music videos, when it comes to the actual production aspect, shooting a music video, the lighting is the most important aspect that you need to focus on, even more so than the camera or the lenses that you're using. If you have lighting and the best kind of lighting set up for that specific music video and the scenes that you've thought out through your pre-production, which also your lighting is a part of the equipment that you should be dealing with in the pre-production process, this is going to make the music video that much better and stand out that much more as opposed to a beginner director who only comes with certain equipment but doesn't utilize the actual pre pre-production process to focus on the lighting. And that is the most important part of the music video. Now guys, you could have a red camera and Alexa mini or any kind of high quality cinema camera, but all that's gonna be irrelevant if you don't have the proper lighting because there's a huge difference between having a lit subject like this and on set of a music video as opposed to having a setup like this. Doesn't matter if you're using a red camera and Alexa, a 1DX Mark II, this is gonna look like some music video if you don't have the proper lighting. Focus on your lighting. Now, not only is lighting just worrying about actually putting light onto your subject, but it's also about having different lighting setups and creating different lighting textures and themes for the actual music video, which is something that you should have also covered in the pre-production phase. So it's not just about having a white light light up a subject, but it's also about the lighting setups and using different colors to be able to create a theme or a look for your music video. You can't create a theme or a look with no lighting or without some type of lighting. I don't care if you're using natural lighting or you're using ambient artificial lighting. Lighting plays a major role in your music video and that's why it is the most important aspect of the production when you're actually on set shooting a music video. Keep in mind too, lighting is also not only dealing with the pre-production of creating a theme or a look, but it also goes back to our number one tip, which was the camera basics and the exposure triangle. Now lighting will help with the exposure triangle, especially when dealing with your ISO. When you have the proper lighting and a specific lighting setup for that music video that you set up in your pre-production phase, what that's gonna do is, is that's gonna prevent you having to crank up the ISO on your camera which in then turn is gonna prevent you from having to add artificial noise in your footage, which is going to prevent your music video from looking terrible. Because it doesn't matter if you shot the footage in 2K, 4K, 6K, or 8K, if you didn't properly light the scene and light the music video, you're just gonna have a higher resolution of Every last one of us at some point in our film career has focused more about the camera and trying to have the best camera or the newest upgraded camera from the one we're currently using as opposed to spending that time and money investing in the lighting. So my advice would be to research and to focus on lighting, lighting setups, and even going and looking at major music videos or well shot videos from directors. And usually in the actual credits or description of the video, you'll be able to find the gaffers and the lighting crew that lit the music video. And sometimes even those people will have been interviewed and they'll actually give breakdowns on how they lit those scenes and that music video. So guys, I did say in addition to doing the five tips for creating better music videos, I was gonna throw in some bonuses at the end. So let's go ahead and cover those three bonuses in creating better music videos. Now guys, those three bonuses in creating better quality music videos in addition to the five that we've already discussed is going to be your lens selection, B-roll, and shooting to edit. 
So guys, it's important to choose the right lens selections for the scene and shot that you're doing for the music video because different focal lengths are going to provide a different look and feel when it comes to the music video in that specific shot. So guys, for instance, you would use a wider angle lens for being able to get everything inside of that location seen on the camera, more or less establishing a shot or establishing a location. And then you would use a closer up lens, say like a 50 millimeter, 85 millimeter, or even a hundred millimeter and above to get details. You wanna focus on details, performance shots, things that are really close up and getting a more intimate feel in your shot for the music video. Now guys, the next bonus is going to be discussing B-roll. Now B-roll is what's going to help add to the music video outside of performance takes. Anything outside of the performance shot is usually referred to as B-roll or slow motion. That's what's gonna be able to help add context to your music video and create more of a storyline dialect for the music video that you're shooting. Doesn't matter if it's run and gun and there's actually no specific storyline to the song that you have, adding B-roll and slow motion into your shot is what adds context to the actual music video as a whole. So guys, when I think of a music video, I just look at it as a short mini movie. And when you think of a movie, there's always gonna be a storyline to that movie. Doesn't matter if it's action, comedy, romance, there has to be some type of movie that draws in the actual context of what you're watching. And it doesn't matter if you're shooting a run and gun style music video in the hood or the trap like we all have before, there still needs to be B-roll and slow motion to add context and to add emotion to the actual run and gun style video that you're shooting. Each music video is gonna vary on the type of B-roll that you're going to need to get, especially if it's more of a storyline based song and video that you've set up. But at the end of the day, you're gonna always need some type of B-roll to add into your music video footage. Actually, I see a lot of people do this and they actually shoot a lot of performance takes and end up not even having enough B-roll and you end up seeing the same B-roll used throughout the music video, which in turn is gonna bore your audience. You don't wanna use the same clips in the music video unless it's calling for that in the music video, but most times there's enough B-roll that you can capture on set between the scenes and the locations to not have to use the same clips more than once. And guys, the last bonus tip is going to be the shoot to edit method and that's going to help in your post-production process when you go to edit and color your music video. Now guys, what I mean by shoot to edit is in your head figuring out how you want the music video to flow from start, middle, and end. And honestly, most of the time you will set up the shoot to edit method in your pre-production phase when you're creating the treatment with the artist for the song. Now, like I was saying, when you do the shoot to edit method, when you're setting up the treatment, once you get on set from the treatment and the shoot to edit method of realizing how you want the music video to flow from start, middle, and end, once you then get on set for the production aspect shooting the music video, you'll know what scenes and what shots you need to get because in your head you've already visually prepared on how you want the music video to look. So it's doing a shoot to edit. In other words, you're not just shooting a whole bunch of random clips. You've in your head figured out how you want this music video to flow. So you know what shots you need to get while you're on set shooting that music video. So once you get into the editing phase, you've shot everything that needs to be shot and you don't have a whole bunch of random unnecessary clips that's going to add more time in the post-production process, which is what we're trying to avoid here. If you didn't have a treatment or you didn't shoot to edit and you just showed up on set, whether it be a run and gun or a major music video set, which they're never gonna allow to happen, and you just shoot a whole bunch of performance clips and B-roll and you try to start piecing a storyline together on set as opposed to doing that in pre-production and treatment, you've no longer shot to edit. So by the time you get to the post-production process to edit and color your music video, now you have to add all these performance clips and add all these B-roll in and try to create a story that you didn't even prepare for to begin with. So now you're gonna spend way more time in the post-production process that you didn't need to have if you'd have just spent that time in pre-production and in the production of shooting. So guys, that is going to be my five tips to creating better music videos, along with a couple bonuses that I had to throw in there for you guys. Let me know down below in the comments, what's some of the things that you have or you currently struggle with when creating music videos, whether it be in the pre-production phase, the production phase, or the post-production editing coloring phase. Let me know down below what some of the struggles that you have had or you currently are having. Let's all try to help each other out in the comments down below. And guys, as always, if you happen to like this video, please be sure to like, comment, and share this video, as well as subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't already. And make sure to hit that notification bell so you can stay up to date with all the content that is coming to this channel. Until the next time, guys, I'll check in with y'all later.